Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, the show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I will show you how to install the Pinwolfer coin door unit on Stern's Spike 2 system. So grab your tools and let's get going. Here is a look at the items that come in the coin door unit kit. The kit includes the coin door unit, the CDU back box board, a power board with cable, six and seven pin jumper cables, two ethernet cables, washers, zip ties, and two audio cables. If you are installing your CDU kit into a game without an existing Pinwolfer Super Kit, you will not need the 1.5 foot audio cable. If you are installing into a game with an existing Pinwolfer Super Kit, you will not need one of the two seven pin rainbow colored jumper cables. Take note of this now and set aside the one cable you will not need. To begin this installation, open the coin door, remove the lockdown bar and playfield glass, and then position the machine so you have access to the sides of the pinball cabinet. Grab the back box keys, lower the speaker panel, and remove the trans light. Here is a look at the connection CN6 in the back box. This board is located just to the left of the power supply. Plug the Pinwolfer power board into CN6 as seen here, and then plug in the power cord from the Pinwolfer kit. If you have something already plugged into CN6, use the three pin jumper on the Pinwolfer power board. Make sure not to overload the CN6 supply. Here is how it should look when properly connected. Next, grab the back box board and plug the other end of the power cable from CN6 into the back box board. For this next step, you will need to determine if you have a 6-pin or 7-pin header on CN5 on the main back box node board. Count the number of pins seen here. For my machine, I have 6 pins for CN5. Once you have determined the correct number of pins on CN5, move the switch on the Pinwolfer back box board to match the number of pins on CN5. Here you can see the switch indicating six pins based on my machine. Now it is time to connect the seven pin jumper cables to the Pinwolfer back box board at CN3 and CN5. Both CN3 and CN5 are shown being connected in the following clip. However, connection to the CN5 header and associated seven pin jumper cable is needed only if you do not have a Pinwolfer Super Kit installed. If you already have a Pinwolfer Super Kit installed, the CN5 jumper cable is not connected at this step, but the CN3 jumper cable will be connected. Make sure to install the cables in the proper orientation using the key on the connector. Next, grab the two double sided sticky pads and install them on the back of the back box board. Remove the backing paper and attach the back box board to the back box as seen here. Here is a picture of the back box board location. If you do not have a Pinwolfer Super Kit installed, here is how it should look, noting that the 7 pin cable is connected between CN5 on the CDU back box board and CN5 on the Spike 2 CPU node board. In all cases, CN3 interconnects the CDU back box board and the Spike 2 CPU node board. In this picture, you can see headers CN3 and CN5 on the main node board. Grab the seven pin jumper cables from the Pinwolfer back box board and plug them into the main node board in the back box. Connect CN3 to CN3 and then connect CN5 to CN5. If you have a six pin header, the jumper from CN5 will overhang by one wire on the top of the CN5 header pins. If you have a seven pin connector on the main node board at CN5, all the wires will match up. See the link in the video description for more information regarding the header on CN5 if you are unsure if you have a six or seven pin header. Here is how it should look when properly installed. If you do have a Pinwolfer Super Kit installed, rather than using CN5, 
you will connect one end of the 1.5 foot audio cable to the TRS in jack on the CDU backbox board as shown in the yellow box. Again, note that CN5 is not used if you already have a Pimwolfer Super Kit installed. If you have a 7 pin CN5 header on your Spike 2 CPU node board, connect the other end of the 1.5 foot audio cable to the sub out jack on the existing Pimwolfer line-out board. If you have a 6-pin CN5 header on your Spike 2 CPU node board, connect the other end of the 1.5-foot audio cable to the aux out jack on the existing Pinwolfer line-out board. If you are going to use an external subwoofer with the CDU, connect the 12-foot audio cable to the sub out jack. This is labeled as number 1 in the image. The Ethernet cables are also shown as 2 and 3 for the next step. Now grab the red and black Ethernet cables and plug them in as seen here. The black cable on the left side and the red cable at the bottom. Here is how it should look when properly connected. Next, grab the Ethernet cables and feed them into the pinball cabinet using the hole on the left side of the back box. Go ahead and raise the speaker panel and lock it into position. At this time, install cabinet protectors if you have them and then partially raise the playfield. Remove the pinballs from the machine at this time. Move to the back of the pinball cabinet and using the wire looms, feed the two ethernet cables down the left side of the pinball cabinet. Make sure to leave enough slack so you can raise and lower the back box if necessary. Since we will be fully raising the playfield, place a small towel or blanket on the back box and then fully raise the playfield. Grab the ethernet cables and continue routing the cables using the wire looms until you reach the coin door. The cables will route up and over the cabinet node board. Now open the coin door to gain access to the coin door plate. Here you can see the four nuts holding on the coin door plate. Use your nut driver to remove the four nuts holding on the plate. With the nuts removed, remove the coin door plate at this time. We will be reusing the nuts, but you can remove the spacers as they are no longer needed. Install the Pinwolfer CDU as seen here. Add one washer on each post, Reinstall the wire loom for the upper right threaded post, and then install the nuts you previously removed. Be very gentle when tightening the nuts, and do not over tighten them. Here is how the CDU should look when properly installed. Next, grab the red and black ethernet cables as seen here, and then plug them into the CDU, the red cable in the top port, and the black cable in the bottom port. Here is how it should look with the Ethernet cables connected. Now take your Phillips screwdriver and remove the two small screws holding on the coin door button panel. Turn the button panel over and unplug the stock connector from the bottom of the panel. Then grab the remaining 6-pin jumper from the Pinwolfer kit and plug it into the button panel. After plugging in the jumper, Use the two small screws and reinstall the button panel. Now grab a small pair of wire cutters and being very careful, remove the zip ties holding the stock 6-pin connector wire you remove from the button panel. You want to remove enough zip ties to feed the stock connector up and over the coin door mech and down to the Pinwolfer CDU panel. Here you can see the stock connector will now reach the CDU panel. Plug the stock connector into the CDU panel as seen here. Use the supplied zip ties and replace the ones you cut off. Here is how the stock connector should look when attached to the CDU panel. Next, grab the installed jumper cable from the button panel and plug it into the CDU panel. Here is how the CDU should look with the jumper connected. Use a zip tie to secure the jumper cable so it does not get pinched in the coin door when closing it. 
At this time, close the coin door and feed some of the slack in the ethernet cables to the back of the pinball cabinet. Make sure you leave enough slack to open and close the coin door. With the CDU installed, completely lower the playfield, remove the towel from the back box, lower the speaker panel, reinstall the trans light, raise the speaker panel, and place the back box keys on the coin door hook. Reinstall the pinballs, the playfield glass and lockdown bar, then turn on the pinball machine. The CDU has several features, including a master volume control, a headphone jack, external subwoofer controls for bass cutoff frequency and bass volume, and externalized service menu buttons. If you want to use the CDU buttons to enter the main menu, make sure the switch is enabled on the CDU panel. This switch can be disabled to prevent kids or others from entering the menu with the coin door closed. If you disable the coin door button, you will need to open the coin door to use the menu buttons. Here is the switch to enable or disable the menu buttons on the front of the coin door. You can also navigate into the menu to control the behavior of the machine when headphones are plugged in into the CDU headphone jack. This would be a good time to pause and study menu navigation. If you plan to use an external subwoofer with the CDU, run the 12-foot audio cable out of the ventilation holes found at the rear of the cabinet and route it to your external subwoofer. Use the coin door buttons or the inside button panel to navigate to adjustments, standard adjustments, and then find the setting labeled front volume knob and set it as desired. I set mine to headphones and cabinet volume. This step is critical to making sure the new CDU panel works with the pinball machine. After adjusting this setting, you should be able to change the game volume using the knob on the coin door. If the menu button switch is in the enabled position, test the Pinwolfer CDU menu buttons. If everything looks good, Move the pinball machine back into position if you previously moved it, and then play a few test games to double check your work. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball, and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball and click the subscribe button. We can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.